Hi, it's Betty Plus Books, and today I'm going to be reviewing Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is also my first Bookmark Monday that I'm doing, where I review a book and paint a bookmark about it on Mondays. So I'll be showing a time lapse of me painting that here, and then you'll see the final product at the end. This is about a girl that goes to Yale so that she can train to keep an eye on the magical societies that reside there. She gets recruited mostly because of her ability to see ghosts, despite the fact that she has a history of drug use and is not really academically Yale material. She's trained by the person who is essentially the other main character of this story, Darlington, who currently holds this position of watchdog to the magical house. However, as we quickly see in the story, he disappears for some reason. A lot of the story is Alex investigating what's happening with these magical houses and various things they're doing and various things that are going wrong, trying to see if things that happen in the university tie back to any of those houses while also searching for Darlington. There were a lot of things that I liked about this book. First, I felt like the two main perspectives of Alex and Darlington were really well done. Bardugo shows us their history through a lot of flashbacks, and the things that happen to both of them are really kind of painful. And so those backstories are very emotionally evocative. And also we get a lot of imagery that helps make their lives before they came to Yale feel very real. I felt like Alex and Darlington's relationship really grew organically throughout the story. So the timeline in the story jumps around between chapters. It'll go from like fall to spring to winter back to fall. Throughout those transitions, we really kind of get a good idea of the broad spectrum of where Alex and Darlington's friendship ended up and where it started and the transition points along the way. And something about the way that was done made it feel like a very slow burn growth of a friendship and very organic. And she's able to do this slow burn, even though you're able to see at practically the beginning of the book, the final state of where their friendship ends up. I thought that friendship was very skillfully built. I didn't like the other relationships in the story as much, but I still felt like they were fairly organic. I'm glad some of those college experience aspects were included in the story. Also throughout the book, there's fairly decent foreshadowing of things that happen toward the end and later in the book, and I thought that really helped tie everything together and keep it a cohesive, even though there were a lot of threads going on at once. Finally, I loved the imagery in the story, everything from various houses within the school, especially the eighth house, um, to, to Darlington's old house, to where Alex used to live, to a really formative school field trip that she had in the past. Like, it just sparked images in my mind, and because of that, I'm really excited to do the bookmark. Now, all of these things made me really like the book, but it's not without its flaws. While I did just note that the foreshadowing for the end of the book events was very well done, I felt like some of those events weren't really well explained in terms of why this happened. It was hinted that they would happen, but I don't understand why it happened. Those reasons weren't really made crystal clear to me, but there are going to be sequels, I believe, so maybe that'll be cleared up in the next book. Second, I wanted to see more things that kind of took place in the academic part of the school setting. We see a lot of Alex's social life when she goes to parties and hangs out with her roommates. We see very, very little of her actually being a student at Yale. There's a little bit of an illusion in a small part of the book because she's running back and forth between classes and trying to do classes and not being an academic success previously and also having this side job that nobody can know about. It takes up such a small portion of the book that I have trouble believing that Alex is actually going to school at all. I would have preferred the author either lean a little bit more into Alex's struggles in school and actually taking those classes and having some of her work seep into and interrupt her classes directly, or lean the other way and give a more concrete explanation for why, although she's a student at Yale, she's not really fully a student at Yale. If they just said at the beginning like, hey, you're going to be in the dorms and interacting with other students so you seem natural and you might like show up to classes, but really you don't actually need to take the classes. That would have been a lot more realistic to me. I had trouble believing that Alex is going into this and juggling all these things and not really being prepared for the academic side and not just straight up failing everything. So I think leaning a little harder one way into she's trying super hard and she's exhausted by all this schoolwork or leaning the other way into it doesn't actually matter how you do in school would have been a lot more believable. The next thing that I don't think was an actual weakness, but just something I would have preferred, I would have preferred to get more immersion into more of the magical houses. This isn't a super short book, so I understand that, that there wasn't time for that. And also there was pretty deep immersion into one of the houses. So this isn't really something I can take off points for and say it wasn't good because of this, but 
I really want additional immersion and more knowledge of the other houses in future books because as it is, I don't know much about any of the houses from an immersion standpoint other than the manuscript house. Whereas honestly, I was hoping it would be something a little more like, here's every single house, here's their usual traits and properties, and we get really deep into knowing what each house looks like and what their corridors are like and, and what their philosophy is like. But then again, maybe that's something she's saving for a future book, so I can't be too harsh on that. Now, who would I recommend this book for? While I really enjoyed this book, one caveat I have to make is that it has so many potential triggers. Basically, all of the triggers, because it does contain sexual assault of various kinds. It features drug abuse, it features murder. It describes in great detail the images of the ghost and referring to how they would have died based on the way they look in death. Other than the descriptions of how the ghosts actually died, the ghost part of the story is actually not really the scary or triggering part. I feel that it's all the other things. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book for people who like books set in school because I don't feel like that's actually the main focus of the book. I would recommend this book if you like mysteries or if you like books about secret societies, if you like relationships in books that seem to grow organically but don't necessarily expect super tight friendships in this very first book. Also, if you like revenge plots, there might be some stuff that you like in this, although it does get pretty gross at one point. I felt like in terms of magic, the actual use of magic was fairly tangential to the plot. The main character doesn't really use magic at all. If you're hoping for a book wherein the main character learns a bunch of magic, this isn't the right book for that. The other thing I want to note is that if you did like Lee Bardugo's previous books, that doesn't necessarily mean you like this book. If you didn't like her previous books, that doesn't necessarily mean you won't like this book. I liked but didn't love Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, and honestly the Grisha trilogy I just don't remember that much. But the content of this one was much more up my alley, and it might have been a little more mature. I would classify this more as an adult book than a young adult book, even though the writing sometimes feels a little young adulty. So just don't go into this book or avoid this book because you're expecting the same things as Bardugo's previous books. For my overall rating, I'd give this book a 4 out of 5 star. While it was the perfect book for my mood at the time, and I loved the first shadowing, I love the character building, I love the scenery, it's not totally without its flaws, and I wasn't riveted or emotionally invested in everything the entire time, so it maybe could have been a little bit better. That is the end of my review for Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you decide whether or not you want to read this book. Please visit again soon. I hope to be in your subscription feed every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so until you see me again, happy reading! Just a quick video to shoot the end state of this bookmark and a little explanation as to what it means. Um, so maybe very, very minor spoilers, but this is a picture kind of representing what I thought of with regards to the manuscript house. So this house is described as having a spiral staircase that goes down from the top level to eight levels below ground. Um, there's an image uh, outside the building of a little circle that you can only see from certain angles and while I couldn't really portray that in paint um, I wanted to kind of give the impression of that in any way. It's described as having some ghosts throughout the building as they're having a party in the building so I drew some little white figures to represent ghosts in there. Um, I kind of wish that I'd left out the lines between the floors. I feel like I could have made something much cooler but Something to learn for next time, and, and in the meantime, this will serve as a nice bookmark for me. I'll have to figure out if I want to laminate it, or how to laminate it, but I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this, and hope you enjoy the final result.